The Secret of the Conde Romanos, Chapter 15 I detected an extraordinary chemistry between them. Helena divulged with evident delight to Gwen as she sat barefoot in the porch rocker on the veranda of Dr. Cordero's house, sipping a glass of sparkling wine that she and Lysander had brought home from their recent trip with Blaise to the Monterey Peninsula. It had taken a year for them to fulfill their promise to go up to visit Jack and see the harbor seal colony, and it had been well worth it. Although they had missed the actual pupping season, there still was much activity going on. Recently born pups learning to swim in the shallows of the cove, the short but most unwelcome visit of the juvenile male elephant seal, and the one late birth to which they had borne witness as hundreds of seagulls mercilessly descended on mother and newborn, biting and screaming greedily, all trying to lay claim to la the placenta. Mother Nature is not for the faint of heart, Helena reminisced while hugging her knees and admiring her toenails, which she had recently painted red, white, and blue. It was the 4th of July, and Lysander was in the backyard with Blaze, playing a mock version of croquet, while the two cats looked on in fascination. Later that day, he would fire up the barbecue for a traditional holiday repast before the climatic fireworks display, courtesy of the Bel Air Bay Club, located just below the bluffs and across the highway from the house. Well, I just thought it would be nice for all of you to stop by the gallery and introduce yourselves if you happened to be in Carmel, Gwen rejoined, and then after a sip of the crisp sparkling wine added, I simply had no idea they already knew each other. But that's the strange thing, Helena elaborated. They did and they didn't. It was if they'd always known each other, and it was as if they were meeting for the very first time. When I said, Paloma Cordero, this is my brother, Jack Lambert, she simply said, I know, and extended her hand as if she'd been expecting him all her life. And when he took her hand, he actually kissed it as if knighthood were still in flower. I honestly thought he might <clears throat> do something really embarrassing, such as drop down on one knee, Helena recounted incredulously. It is extraordinary, as you say, Gwen agreed, noting that Bartholomew and Blaze had joined them on the veranda as well, wanting to hear all the details, no doubt, but feigning disinterest as they groomed themselves fastidiously. What do you think their previous connection actually was? Gwen prodded further. Past life, probably, Helena tossed off the statement cavalierly. No, I mean now, silly, Gwen chided insistently. Well, it turns out they do have a somewhat plausible explanation. It seems over the course of the year, Jack has given a series of public lectures at Hopkins on harbor seals, and Paloma has attended all of them. So he, naturally, was no stranger to her, and he claims to have remembered her face in the audience. I don't know if things can get any more serendipic than that, Gwen mused. Well, it turns out they can, Helena assured her, for when we left the gallery, he immediately ducked into the nearest florist to send her flowers, and on the enclosure card he actually wrote, To my dear lamb. When I mentioned it might be a bit soon to take the liberty of using an endearment, he just scoffed and said, It wasn't an endearment at all. It was simply her name. And sure enough, I found out Cordero means lamb in Spanish. Did you know that? I did, actually. It's why Carlos always called Blanquita the little white lamb. It wasn't just a charming endearment. It was also... A literal translation, Gwen replied. Then I rest my case, Helena said in amazement, for 
That was exactly what Paloma had said when she had called the very next day to thank Jack. The fireworks that evening were splendid as usual. The Easter days sat out on the veranda to enjoy them from the comfort of the porch rockers, while Gwen preferred to stay inside where she could reassure Bartholomew and Blaze that peace would soon be restored to their kingdom. Besides, she had already had enough fireworks for one day, just knowing that in a not-too-distant corner of the world, a mysterious spark had been ignited between two such old and like-minded souls. <laughs> Thank you.